In this video, I'm gonna break down how we shot this. How we shot this. It gives you an in right away. If you're like not matching their energy or the street's energy, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb. And also how we shot this. I'm gonna shoot some black and white here. And edited all of it. It's weird when you say and edited and edited all of it and edited all of it and edited all of it. If you didn't know, I'm currently working on a documentary with Joe Greer. He's running a marathon in December, CIM, California International Marathon. He's trying to go under the two hour and 40 minute mark. So we've been documenting the past three, four months, the process of getting ready for it, and we'll be documenting the next six months through the race and post race to get hopefully a feature length documentary. I took on this endeavor with him kind of throughout the idea last fall after we ran the New York City Marathon and it just kind of kept blossoming into a bigger and bigger project. And now most of Creative Club is helping me out with the documentary and it's just really exciting and interesting. From the get go, when we talked about doing all these trips with Joe where he's in different places and training and back home and in New York and out west and all these places, we wanted to give value, bring value to him in doing some Street Diary episodes for him. So he has this reoccurring uh, video series on his own YouTube channel called The Street Diaries and we figured, well, if we're there, we might as well just shoot them while we're with you and help you uh, with editing them and get, getting them out into the world. So on the last day of our trip in New York, we went to Coney Island and um, filmed Joe for about an hour doing his thing, doing street photography at Coney Island. Also the sponsor of this video is Musicbed, who also sponsored the Street Diaries episode, so it's cool when it's cool when your friends have the same sponsors and those sponsors are actually your friend. <laughs> Love you, music bed. <laughs> All right, the setup. We shot this on my new Canon C70 with the 15 to 35 RF 2.8. There are tons of reasons why I love the C70. I've talked about it in previous videos that I've released in the past few months, but one thing that's crazy for this kind of shooting is that there is a pre-record option on the C70 where whenever you hit the record button, it records the two seconds prior to you hitting the record button which is crazy for catching audio or getting something that's happening really quickly in the moment. Shooting with the 15 to 35 is a dream, the RF, because it's super sharp and it's built for a camera like the C70 with an RF mount. So autofocus is amazing and having the versatility on a super 35 sensor to go from 15 to 35 is like doing 24 to 50 on a full frame equivalent. And the preamps on this camera are incredible. 95% of the audio on Joe's Street Diaries video was from the NTG4 Plus, the Rode NTG4 Plus, plus on camera pointed at Joe. There's only one point where I used the mic that was clipped to his outfit. As I typically do on the C70 these days, I was shooting in C-Log2 in 10-bit and I accidentally recorded it in 420 color space instead of 422, but I didn't really notice any difference in the grade, except maybe some discoloring in the sky. Plus the C70 in log two is giving you 16 stops of dynamic range with that new DGO sensor, which is absurd. We did have stabilization turned on on the 15 to 35, the lens, but no electronic stabilization in the camera. That kind of looks like garbage most of the time. <laughs> Unless you're shooting with something 50 mil and above, I liked using it with the 70 to 200, like when we shot at this other street session in Manhattan with Joe. I was fully handheld with a 70 to 200 and electronic stabilization on with the lens stabilization on as well. All the footage shot in Coney Island was all handheld, so you do get some of that documentary shaky look, but it looks smooth with the stabilization in the lens. It's... I like it. The entire video was graded with my new LUTs, the 606 collection, and I did a combination of 80% intensity of the Avondale LUT and 40% intensity of the North Park LUT to get some of the blue back in the sky. All over the gamut, Rec 709 LUT to convert it from log to to correct color. And then at the end with all the track stuff that was in black and white, I used another LUT in my pack called Montrose, which is my black and white LUT, and it fit really well with the black and white film that Joe was shooting that night too. So Joe gave me a genre of music to work with. He wanted that lo-fi, chill, hip-hop sort of vibe. Having scoured Musicbed for like eight years, I have some of my favorite artists in each genre. I actually just used two artists in this, even though I used five or six songs. And those two artists were an artist literally called Lo-Fi 
and red licorice. Whether it be music for my wedding films, YouTube, commercial work, narrative stuff like this documentary, Music Bed has it covered through every single genre. They even have vintage stuff, which is incredible. And while I always talk about their search engine being the best, I really feel like their featured playlists are the dark horse on the website. I recently looked at Solomon Lighthelm's playlist, who is a really talented DP, and actually found an incredible song in that playlist to put over a trailer that we've been sending to brands for potential funding for the documentary. Here's a little sneak peek of that. Something special was happening with That's All I Can Show You. And then I got like Musicbed is the place for getting music when making your films. You can get one month off of any annual subscription. If you sign up for an annual subscription, just use my code all caps Eric Floberg22 at checkout and you'll get that month off. Thanks, Music Bed, for sponsoring this video. All right, let's jump into Premiere and see all the fun stuff I did in this edit. Obviously, you're gonna wanna go to Joe's channel to see this entire video, your choice, and if you wanna watch it now and then watch the breakdown after, or just watch the breakdown now and then go watch it after. It's your, it's your life, you do what you want. At this beginning, I love doing cold opens like this where you say something interesting, provide something interesting, and in this one, um, he's testing out the new Cinestill 400D, so showing that that film stock is purple in color in real life, but isn't purple <laughs> when you scan it. I ended up using this new font. Um, shout out to my new editor, Josh, who was looking through fonts and found this new one. I believe it's called Monica. No, it's wrong. <laughs> Faruka. And I got a uh, free sample of it. And if you put any punctuation, it doesn't let you because it is a free sample of the text. So might have to purchase that later. That actually lent itself to a really creative, interesting thing that I did because I couldn't use numbers with this text. So I ended up using Fino Sans for the number, which I used on a video a long time ago when I talked about net worth. It looks kind of great Gatsby-ish. But I loved how this ended up looking with the boldness of the letters and the thinness of the numbers. It really made the 400 and Cinestill 400D stand out, which was really cool. So I just did two blocks of text and fit the 400 within the Cinestill 400D right there. And then I ended up using that as the moniker for whenever he shot Cinestill 400D later on in the video down in the bottom right corner. So I'm just gonna kind of move through this sequentially so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, as I mentioned before, I have two adjustment layers going here because I used two of my LUTs in combination with each other to get the look that I got. And I was scared that this was gonna kind of overbake the look and make it look kind of wonky. Um, but instead it really brought blue back in the sky because if I take off North Park, which is the second one that I used, you can see a lot of the blue removed from the image. On that top layer, uh, as I typically do with coloring, I included Gamut C-Log 2 Rec 709. Um, if I don't have that on, it just looks like gray mess because Log 2 just looks like a gray mess. So you need that Rec 709 on it first. Uh, in the basic correction tab there, and then the creative tab, I put Avondale at a little bit over 80% intensity to get that look. So without the North Park look, you're looking like really warm summery vibes with a little bit of blue in the sky that's kind of hinting more green. Um, and then I put North Park in uh, on top of that at 40% here, 44% in this creative tab. Um, so that I could get all that blue back in the image and I felt like it was a really nice balance of the two throughout the video So with that I tweaked some of the Lumetri panel and basic corrections uh, on that first layer with the Avondale LUT to increase saturation a little bit more, really give that punchy color vibe. Increased exposure, lowered contrast highlights, and brought up the shadows to again increase more of that dynamic range in the image. As I mentioned, all of the onboard audio from the C70 is what was used in the video outside of this one section where he talks to Alex on the streets. 35? No 28? Damn, all I did bro. was 35 for my whole trip. Okay. That is from the Sony clip mic that is hanging out on his overalls right there I did that on purpose just because I wanted to pick up more of their voices in the conversation And it was a bit more clear in that sense than just the NTG on camera So you might be wondering how I put these images in the, this overlay together So I just had a black color stamp uh, on the bottom of this image So to get that super easy this little moniker new item down here You just type in color mat and then it'll ask for the resolution of your project, to which you say yes, then you could pick any color imaginable and title it, and then you drag it into the project. So I have a black frame, and then I have a white frame on top of that. First, I wanted to decide how large I wanted the photos. So every time I drag a photo into the frame, 
Um, it obviously takes up too much of the frame, so I scale to frame size. You can either right click and do that down here, scale to frame size, or the backslash button is the shortcut I have programmed. I think it's what's standard in Premiere. And then I scale it back to 80% so that it's not taking up all of the frame. So I scaled every photo to 80% after scaling it to frame size. And then once it was there, I put the white frame underneath there. So if I can model again, I can get a new color mat here, go to white. And if I drag that in, again, it's taking up the whole frame. So we're gonna make this 82% just to be a little bit bigger on top and bottom. And then I put the crop tool in on top of the white and scaled it in 10.5% on each side to get the same exact size to get that look underneath the black. And then I just rescaled the size of that text and put it over in the bottom right corner. Every time it's Portrait 400, obviously had that text, and every time it's in still 400D, switch that text there. Dang, photo on top of footage looks pretty cool. Maybe you need to do that next time. The reason I did this combination, Joe gave me the direction that he wanted a black backdrop, but to give a little bit of a matte, I wanted to do that white frame around it, as opposed to what a lot of people do on Instagram with a white background and a black frame around the image, because naturally uh, film has that black frame around the image. So I just kind of flipped it on its head and did opposite. A lot of the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory as far as color goes with the combination of the LUTs, um, mixing different songs in in that lo-fi genre. There was this portion where he was photographing this guy dancing. I did this fun song where he was kind of bobbing his head to the music that I put in there, which was awesome. It matched like the BPM of the song that this guy was playing, which that kind of serendipitous stuff happens all the time in video editing. I just love it. So final sequence through uh, after we left, I just did a slideshow of the rest of the images he took while we were gone, leaving for our flight. So a mix of Cinestill 400D first and switching back to Portra. And then this fun transitional piece into some stills in the night before. I started with color here, strictly with the North Park LED because I wanted to really emphasize that blue kind of look with how wet and rainy and like dark the day was that felt like that fit the vibe way better at 80% intensity. Onboard audio with the NTG preamps from the C70 him talking about how he's switching to black and white. And as soon as he said he's gonna to switch to black and white, I switched my adjustment layer from, I believe this little section I used Belmont instead of North Park. And then I switched to Montrose, which is the black and white. And I was noticing with the really harsh lights, I was taking some exposure down and in some scenes I was decreasing the highlights quite a bit as well. This one was just like flawless. Didn't need to touch it at all. That's literally just Montrose at 100%. But yeah, some of those you can see I'm lowering contrast. And then I think later on, I also decreased highlights. You can see it's pretty hot because he was close to that light there. So just decreasing those highlights back to get some more recovery back in uh, his skin so it's not blown out. And the same deal here, I just nested the black and white matte from earlier. So that's what that looks like. If you want to collapse two things like that in Premiere, all you have to do is hit Command N for nest or right click and hit nest. And then just the same exact thing here with the photo, just scaling to frame size and getting it down to 80% on the scale. I just did this fun little transition at the end here where he's talking in black and white and then switching back to color. Hope that was helpful, hope that was interesting. And again, thank you to Musicbed for sponsoring this video. We're gonna be doing a ton more Street Diary and behind the scenes throughout the rest of the year as we film the documentary, so keep an eye out for that. We're hoping it's going to be feature length and so it's probably not going to be ready until late spring or early summer of next year. Races in December gives us enough time to finish the last parts after the race and get the whole thing edited. So keep an eye out. We have a lot of stuff planned. Um, thanks for watching. Go watch Joe's video. It's up here. You link it there. Maybe it's here. Maybe it's there. I don't know. End screen. Bye.